Number five, it bears mentioning what exists when something is illegal. Um, and these are what we call underground markets, or sometimes we refer to them as black markets. Right, so um, in any culture, in any society, there are certain things that are legal and illegal. And as you change countries, things that are legal in one place are legal in another, right? Um, uh, we could think, uh, simple examples here would be, what if I want to buy cigarettes in Hawaii and I'm 19 years old? It's obviously not allowed in Hawaii, right? You have to be 21. But I could go to California and I could be 18. So, what do 18 to 20 year olds do that live in Hawaii that want to smoke, right? They could, uh, right, they could themselves always travel to California and pick up lots of cigarettes and then come back to Hawaii. Or, we imagine that there probably would emerge a market where those who are over 21 that can legally buy the cigarettes would then sell cigarettes illegally to those who are 18 to 20. Now, what about something that is universally illegal, right? Like something like, let's, you know, pick a hardcore drug of some kind, right? That's illegal, cocaine or heroin, right? Not legal uh, anywhere in the U.S., um, but yet it exists, right? And there is a market for it, right? We could figure out by, you know, a certain weight or a certain volume, we could figure out how much heroin on average costs, right? Or we could figure out how much cocaine costs or, you know, name your drug. The point is, is just because it's illegal doesn't mean that people aren't buying the thing or selling the thing. So, when something becomes uh, illegal, the point here is that people still buy it and sell it. Much like um, alcohol um, in the 1920s, right? The problem is is that you really can't control it then if it's illegal, right? So, um, and again, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to invite controversy here, right? But um, let's look at something like prostitution. Prostitution is, uh, except Nevada, right, is illegal in the U.S. That means that. Um, the workers, you know, they can't unionize, they don't have health insurance, um, they don't have some protections, and the customer also doesn't have, you know, consumer protections or anything like that. Everyone's doing something wrong here in this case, right, because it's illegal. But in the Netherlands, where it's legal, right, presumably, right, you could probably get health insurance, just like a Walmart employee in the U.S. gets health insurance, right? You could unionize, right, because the workers could get all together and say, we demand certain conditions. And also, consumers could say, hey, uh, you know, I paid this price but didn't get this, right? I, um, you know, paid money and, um, you know, they wouldn't accept my. They wouldn't accept my money, right? You could ha you could make consumer complaints, and you would have something legitimately to complain about. Um, so, what we see here then in underground and black markets is that a society must really think about what harm it's doing just by making something illegal. Um, I'm not in favor of legalizing everything because what we make illegal reflects our culture and our values. Um, an example would be something like, I don't think that five-year-olds should be working, right? So it's illegal for five-year-olds to work. Does that mean that five-year-olds, that no five-year-old in the U.S. works? No, we would suspect that there are some parents who choose to do that, right? I wouldn't do it. I would hope that some of you wouldn't do it, um, but we a market exists. Now, what does this mean? Is that the children who do work in these kind of markets are probably really mistreated. And it also means that the um, buyers of their labor also don't have any protections as well.